this is David Benign from Excel Consulting and in this video I'm going to show you in Excel how to make a formula that extracts the financial year. So over here we have our Excel data and I have here I want to calculate data based on uh, the financial year that this falls in. And my financial year let's say ends in ends in June. So what I can do is I'm going to do this step by step. First I'm going to extract the month with the function called equals month. Most of Excel's date functions will say serial number. <laughs> this just means the date value. So equals month that will give me the month number. It won't give me the name but March is the third month, October is the 10th, etc. If I move my mouse till it's a black cross, and double click, this will come down like that. Next, I'm going to go to year. So equals year, basically the same idea. Here, close brackets, 2018, 2017. But actually, these two are in the same financial year because my financial year starts on the 1st of July and ends on the 30th of June. So here, I'm going to... Well, let's not do oct, let's do instead, let's do June or after 1st of July. So here I'm going to do an if, it equals if month of this, that's my logical test, test if that is less than 7. So if it's less than seven, it's in the first six months of the year. Then my value if true will be year of this. So this is basically saying if it's at the beginning of the year, it uses the financial year there. Otherwise, it's year here. Plus one. So this is 2018. This one is also 2018 because it's looking forward. These ones, most of them will be 2018. A couple of them are 19 because this is in September 18. So we can see that it is different there based on it. This is of course dynamic. So if I change this to 2012, it would change in all of these as well. Now, this isn't very good because it's still not describing that my year actually straddles, my financial year actually straddles two years. So instead, I'm going to add uh, FY for my financial year. So I can do equals FY and this and then it will show me the full year. But I'm, I'm going to go even further than that. I'm going to say equals FY and, and I only want the last two characters, 18. I don't want 2018. So what I can do here is I can do write this one, comma, 2. So I'm now extracting the last, the two letters most right of this. So there we go, FY 2018. If I drag that down, it will show it like that. And I can keep going in there. Um, of course, it's ideal to do this all in one. So for the sake of this, I could copy this formula. And here, instead of F6, this would be the entire formula like that. And then I'm not reliant on earlier formulas, so I can delete other columns if I need to. Finally, I always like to do this. Um, have a formula that you can drag down past, um, past where you currently have data. So all of these, if I drag them down, they'll give me kind of zero results, which are nonsensical and not helpful. Uh, 1900, this is how Excel writes the number zero 
in date terms in year terms. So here I'm going to write equals if this is blank, then return a blank. Otherwise, return this. Now in Excel, the way to write out a blank is two speech marks together like that. Close my brackets and I get that. Or similar to what I did before is instead of that, I can just copy this and here I can paste instead of G6, I can paste that. And then I have all of my formula in the one cell. And if I go down past where I have data, it doesn't matter until I write in a date in this column. There we go. So now it works. Otherwise, it would give me a blank. Great. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.